let's talk about the asynchronous command. It's not in the current robot legs build yet, but I'm working on it, okay? I'm gonna follow basically what Sean did from the robot legs. An async command is also known as an asynchronous command. What does that mean? Why? Java, C, C++ devs invented the command pattern. They are from blocking languages. Their code will freeze when they make a network request. Things like Lua and ActionScript don't. <laughs> okay, they don't pause your GUI to wait for this web server to respond. You have a callback. You know, JavaScript has promises. They have callbacks. So does Lua. Uh, Lua is not a blocking language, right? So they would execute a server request and code and pause. Lua is not always blocking. It can be sometimes, like with files, but not with web server requests, not with cloud requests, not with some of you know SQL requests. It can be asynchronous. Sometimes things need to wait. It's not always networking requests. It could be something else. Maybe we're waiting for the user to respond. Maybe it's always alive. Maybe this asynchronous command is immune for garbage collection and it's part of a pushed uh, observer. It looks for pushes from the server and updates the model, right? And it responds to errors and successes. Perfect place for controller logic. Uh, to wait, you know, sometimes things need to wait. To wait, they need context. To have context, they need to exist. If they need to exist, you know, if they don't exist, commands most of the time could dive and work and sweep. A uh, quick crash course in garbage collection for Lua. Lua has something called reference counting. So if you use five classes and, you know, or one class at one instance and five people have a reference to them, those are five pointers. The garbage collection will say, hey, do you have any people referencing you? Oh, five. Yeah. Okay. You're, I'm not going to clean you up. Oh, you have no references? Okay. Well, I'll delete you. What if this guy knows about this guy, but no one knows about these two guys? It's a circular reference, right? Sort, not only really circuit reference, but they know about each other. XML parsers are notorious for this, right? So the garbage collector go, oh, you have a reference of one, you know, it's greater than zero, and so do you, okay, I'm not gonna collect you, right? But that's floating around in memory. It's kind of like when a group has a button in it and a button has a VO in it, and then they reference each other, but this group is floating in space. Well, usually the master view has no more reference because you can't remove self, right? But sometimes in robot legs, they might have a reference to the model. Mark and sweep is say, wait a minute, no one knows about you guys. You're floating off in space. So the mark and sweeper is really good at creating, get rid of commands. It's, it's, it's good. You don't want that to happen for asynchronous commands. You want to wait for the network request to come back. So you have to store this command somewhere. Do you store it in global? Do you store it in a global static method? Right? Where is this stored? Uh, do you prevent the garbage collector from running? You really shouldn't mess with garbage collectors in a framework. So uh, asynchronous, you need to have a, a, a planned way and a non-global class, and we'll get to the difference between Lua 5.1 and 5.2, a non-global way that's formalized for holding on to these commands and allowing the developer to get rid of them or free them up for garbage collection when they see fit, okay? So it seems simple on the surface, but it's not. Asynchronous commands do not block. They're just like any other callback. You say, call this method, and hey, when you're done, call this function when you're done. That could be in the same thread. That could be in five minutes. Don't know, right? You control when they're ready for garbage collection, and you handle their service bond is with context. When the service comes back, gives you data, you know that I'm in the user update command. Okay, I've got a user now. I waited five minutes for the server. Now I can update the user with this data, right? Or the, the data I've got is out of date. Let me update this update those fields, merge the two, maybe you have your own core data implementation, right? Whatever that is, you, rea you react and respond with less code. It's dry, it's an asynchronous command. It could be a bridge to your services, right? If you don't want your models calling your services or your mediators calling your services, that's fine, right? Async command can ha handle that for you. There is a feature to fork the asynchronous commands to call other asynchronous commands. So you don't have one command doing everything. You can offload that to other controller classes or controller asynchronous commands to do that. They are not garbage collected until they all call finish and then you call finish, right? That's really hard. <laughs> so I don't have forking in there yet either, but I'm getting there. The requirements for asynchronous command when it's in there. Number one, you have to have an execute method just like a command. Number two, you have to call finish when you are complete. Usually that's when a service succeeds or fails, right? One of the two. That's the most common way. Those are the two things. So when it's ready, that's what it'll do. If you do it yourself, that's what you should do. That way when I have the API, your API will congruent. 